hearts race. And the crowd goes wild. All across the nation, the Dirt Track Warriors duke it out for what matters the most. The trophy and the glory. This is Gas and Glory, presented by r and Enterprises. Coming to you direct from the studios at r and Enterprises, this is the show where we talk about what matters the most, the trophy and the glory. This is Gas and Glory with Kyle Luters and Neil Quick. And Neil, how are you doing today, my friend? Doing awesome, Kyle. Uh, back home and uh, actually uh, had a relaxing weekend up in Knoxville, enjoying the race. Whoa, 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 whoa. You relaxed at Knoxville? It this, w- this does not sound right. It was like a vacation. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. And we'll have to expand out. more on this because we actually went to the races a whole different way this year. Yay, many Christmas. Can you believe that, folks? He actually was on vacation in Knoxville. Neil the Quick, salesman extraordinaire, salesman to the stars of sprint car racing, was on vacation? That doesn't make sense. But speaking of the Knoxville Nationals, we are back after a one-week hiatus, and I think the, the, the easiest thing that we can say, we were too busy last week. I mean, just straight up. Yeah, we were. I mean, it was kind of crazy. And uh, Between the Ironman and then getting gone up to Knoxville, we, yeah. we had a week. Yeah, we had a week, and uh, by the end of the week, it, it was drastically slower. Ay, ay, ay. All right, moving right on into this, the results from the Knoxville Nationals. Everybody's probably heard by now, but we have to give him a big shout-out and congratulations. Donnie Schatz. Folks. Better known as Donnie Schatzville. Donnie Knoxville. Donnie, Donnie Knoxville is the name. Schatzville is what we're calling the town. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do it. That You like that? Yeah, actually, that's great. Okay, so we have Donnie Knoxville. Yep. And he lives and races in? Schatzville. Boom! He's got it, folks. But anyways, Donnie Schatz wins his eighth Knoxville Nationals in nine years, Neil, something Steve Kinzer hasn't even done. Um, he, sat on, he, he sat on the pole. For the race, which I think everybody was sitting there going, well, this is a foregone conclusion. He's on the pole of the 50 lapper. Looked phenomenal in his qualifying night. That number 15 car just drove to the front night in, night out at the Nationals. I think the only race that he looked somewhat human was the World Challenge race. Yeah. On Saturday uh, morning, afternoon, we had the rain out and, you know, we started playing the 24 hours of Knoxville. But can you put into words what we're watching here we are literally watching history being made with what donnie and that entire number 15 stp armor all chevrolet j and j team is doing well i think there's a lot to be said of of exactly for what he's doing i mean it's it one word comes to mind is dominance of course uh but it, it it is something that uh is the history books go i mean we're seeing something that uh we haven't seen, and I, I, I don't know where it stops here. And, and as far as competition goes, I mean, call Brian Brown on this. I'm sure that he'll tell you it's frustrating as anything. I mean, this guy has been putting it up and giving Donnie a run the last two or three years. And, again, they're giving him the, the most trouble of anybody this weekend uh, through Knoxville. And uh, you got to feel a little heartbroken for old Brownie. He gave him a fit up there, and China, Donnie fired right back there. Brian Brown uh, kind of stabilized – uh, the interval between him and Shots during the first 25 laps. And then when they came in for the pit stops, which, by the way, I had forgotten how crazy it is down there when they do the pit stop because I about got ran over with jack handles, fuel jugs, tires. I even think Mike Roberts, the other guy in the pits on the PA with me, about ran me over as well too, so I forgot about that. But it seemed like after the pit stops and with about seven laps to go, Brian Brown – came on and i've got to tell you when he came around donnie shots on the outside of turn number two i, I you I, th- I think it was measured on the richter scale the way the place went crazy up crazy you there. are exactly right because those stands just i remember i looked into the back i was watching from the tower in the infield i looked on the back stretch i saw the pass i swung around i looked at the grandstands and by the way sellout crowd kudos to knoxville sellout on saturday night that entire grandstand looked like it all leapt to its feet at the same time. The flash bulbs went crazy, and you could hear the cheering over these cars that are racing all around this half-mile oval. It is a moment that made the hair on the back of my neck stand. It, it was electrifying. Oh, it's uh, it was impressive. And, and in the, I mean, with the thought of the possibility of somebody knocking shots off with seven laps to go and Brownie, 
definitely went to work there after the the pit stops after the pit stops and the fuel deal uh i i honestly think that uh I don't think he could get any more out of the car that he was getting. I mean, he was actually uh, railing and, and making the car do things that I hadn't seen and, and actually looked like uh, Brownie had the possibility and the horses to pull it off. And and uh, I think Donnie felt the same thing when he went around him. I, I, I think in his interview when he talked to you guys, it was a deal where he felt a little deflated there for a lap or two. And, and fortunately, uh, the never give up attitude and hanging in there, he uh, got that thing to go around the bottom and get back around him. Listen to the week that Brian Brown had. Okay, it's more like 10 days, but it's called the Southern Iowa Speed Week. Okay. Okay. He wins the Arnold Motor Supply Knoxville 360 Nationals. He goes over to Oskaloosa, wins the Front Row Challenge. Then he goes and he wins his qualifying night for the second year in a row at Knoxville and finishes second in the Nationals. Can you get much better? Oh, yeah. He came up one spot short in the 50-lapper. But, Neil, that's something. I, I think, Brownie, if you actually ask him on this deal, he'd give up all the other wins for one for the final win on the last night there. <laughs> I, I, would not, um, I would not argue with that one bit. Um, I mean, Brian Brown. You know, last year I think he looked more – last year in talking with him and looking at him after the race, I think last year was a more crushing loss on him having led so much of the race only to have shots come through the B and all the way through the field on the A to come beat him. I think this year he realized that he had a car that was capable of beating Donnie shots, and he was much more upbeat in victory lane this year than last year. Well, I think that uh, the the fact that the bone was out in front of you and you're chasing it the whole whole race and you had a chance to put it away is a little bit more to come to grasp and be able to digest and, and – in comparison to last year's situation where, I mean, he doesn't see anything besides lap traffic and he's dealing with that. And then uh, at the second part after the fuel stop last year, all of a sudden this 15 car goes around you and you're going, man, wasn't he in the B? Uh, how, how, how did what's this going happen? On here? Didn't I lap at him? Or No, no, I didn't. It's it's one of those situations. And uh, fortunately for Brownie, I think his day is going to come. And uh, I, I think we've seen it with Donnie. Donnie's put up so many second places before he started putting up wins. And, now he's in this error, minus uh, the loss to Tim Schaefer with the motor issue. I mean, you take and put that win back in there, and he's and got nine in a row. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Could, could you imagine though, minus that, if he would have won next year, that's ten years, ten, ten years in a row. If he could, if 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 he wouldn't have had the troubles in 2010, and if he won next year, there are two very big ifs since. You know, we do not know if he would have won in 2010 had, you know, he not had engine issues. Because I think in his post-race interview as well, in 2010, uh, Shots told Swindell that, hey, dude, you you had her covered tonight. Yeah. And that was the year that Sammy lost the tire and ended up uh, yeah. on his side in turn four. But the, the dominance at Knoxville, and this is going to be a squeal or no squeal question that we're going to get to a little bit later on. We'll tease it a little bit when we're talking about Donnie Schatz chasing history at the Knoxville Nationals. It's it, it's just phenomenal. But, you know, we talked about battling with Brian Brown, talking more about Team r r which we're obviously very, very happy and proud that Donnie Schatz, a member of Team r r was able to take the Knoxville Nationals. Uh, some other Team r r guys, Craig Delansky finished fourth. Yep. Uh, kind of flew under the radar most of the week. You can't uh, – again, he, he did fly under the radar, and you got to get – quick time on his qualifying night. That was about the only thing that jumped out to me on the stat line. Well, it, it, he did have the quick time, uh, which was impressive. I mean, we all know what qualifying is. We're up there for you guys uh, for the point totals and the way it works. But uh, Craig was really kind of under the radar and really put an impressive finish. Uh, and – I. Uh, go back to you on this. I think that uh, Craig running up there on a weekly deal has uh, really paid off big and helped him a little bit. I think Craig running up there weekly has helped him. They have not really ran anywhere else except Knoxville. Guy Forbrook and him, I think, have finally hit on something. It seemed there for a couple of weeks that he was uh, he was maybe out to lunch, and one week he was out to breakfast. Like, I don't think he showed up to breakfast. <laughs> um, but him and Guy Forbrook really have gelled and I think have done a really great job here probably in the last month. So that's been very interesting to watch there. Uh, speaking of quick times and Team r r Paul McMahon, sixth place finish this year. Good look at number 51 CJB Motorsports Machine. Terry McCarl, McStallion. Yep. And you want to talk about a car. He had a oh, horse. Oh, McC <laughs> McCarl's car looked great. 
Well, I think I was texting you during the race going on and, and on the final night when they were picking the best-looking cars, and I was disappointed to see that Terry and, and a couple other guys didn't get up there. Oh, speaking of the chrome car, did you see what happened to Shots' side panel? Yeah, it's that, that peel and wrap stuff. The, the, I'm telling you, man, I saw a picture that half of the side panel on the wing was gone. I would, well, it looked like STP was celebrating their 6th anniversary, not their 60th. <laughs> Well, I, he rolled out Old Faithful and paint schemes on Saturday night, and it went to victory lane. Oh man, she looked good. She uh, she she looked good until she started peeling. Yeah. Um, Mark Dobmeyer <laughs> finished eighth, and Joey Saldana was ninth for Team R and R drivers in the top ten. Uh, uh, How about Joey Saldana? Look at that car. Oh, uh, that that car had an excellent look to it. Uh, very quick. Uh, one of our artists here at R and R had the privilege of designing that car. Did did a just great job. Uh, looked looked awesome. Uh, it's someone we need to give a tip of the cap to, Shane Stewart, one of our Team r r drivers. He was actually running in the top five until he had a torque tube issue on the number two GoPro Kick It For Kids cancer machine. And, uh, you know, that, it was great to see him win his qualifying night. Got the chance to be down there with him in victory lane. Uh, your hearing needs to be checked. That's all we're going to say about that. Um, but he was very excited yeah, you, I, I, you think I said something I didn't say, so I'm just going to leave it at that. But, no, Shane Stewart, uh, a very impressive run with Larson Marks. Him and Steve Succi really hit on something there at Knoxville, and it was great to see him up near the front. Darren Pittman won the Speed Sport Challenge on Saturday afternoon. We rained out Wednesday night. Track was too wet Thursday night to run both qualifying nights. So we just kicked the Wednesday show to Friday. We ran the Friday show on Saturday morning slash afternoon, and Darren Pittman won the Speed Sport Challenge. Oh, by the way, tip of the cap to the Duncan family. Double header at Knoxville on Saturday with all that rain that they had all week long, and you still had to prep it for 50 laps for the greatest sprint car race of the year. Hats off. Track was great, and uh, what they went through all week to, to make that happen, you can't uh... – can't say that they've got the best up there doing this. I mean, uh, oh, what, you can say it. Well, you can, and, and the thing about it is the people that uh, all of all of you guys involved, uh, from the announcing to uh, the officials and everybody that uh, puts on Knoxville, everything's done at always the top notch and the most professionalism that you see. Well, it was a, including the Duncan family. I mean, they busted their butts all week. <laughs> you know, I, I ran into Chris Duncan uh, after the races Saturday night, and he was. Uh, he was enjoying a uh, very much deserved adult beverage. Um, I'm sure we all had a few adult beverages up there. I wasn't going to go there, Neil, but you know, just just for ambiance here, just to show to take a little bit of the you know the edge off. Well, let me ask you about adult beverages after Knoxville, Kyle. You know, Let's when go I was talking talk about that. when I was talking to the Duncan family, how about I think you misplaced a vehicle after some adult beverages, didn't you? No, I did not. Okay. You, strategically repla- no. you strategically placed it in a different parking lot, right? No, I did not. Oh, okay. okay. Here's the story. All right. I parked my rental vehicle in the high V parking lot every day, Tuesday through Saturday. Which, if, you, if you're if you up there. Is the right first, across from the racetrack. Yep. Yeah, and the first time, as soon as we pulled in town and we checked out the high V, we saw that there was parking and there was somebody monitoring this. But it didn't register. What day did you get there? Tuesday. Oh, thank you. And I hadn't been, had any issues all week. So after working about a 15-hour day. So you got lucky about four days in a row. That's why I thought I was fine. So after working about a 14, 15-hour day on Saturday, you know, the upstanding young man that I am, I'm just looking forward to going to sleep. At what time did we go to sleep on I Saturday? I am looking forward to going to or sleep. Or Sunday? And I walk over to the Hy-Vee parking lot, and my rental vehicle is not where I parked it. I, in fact, I was standing right where I parked it, and it wasn't there. <laughs> now, I've had a few cars towed in my life you know, for, I would say, stupid things. Various reasons. Various reasons. Not, not because I was in trouble, but because somebody else's fault. Um, so I walked into one of the stores and I said, you know, if someone's going to tow a car around here, who is it? Because I know it's not stolen because I have the keys. So I ended up getting a ride over to Mike's Towing. 
And was Mike, Mike a nice guy? Mike was a very nice guy, and Mike was, had a very profitable evening because apparently twenty or excuse me, nineteen other people did the same thing I did. So it was a happening place the next it, it, morning. So I mean, I mean, Mike had twenty of these vehicles lined up. Mike had the towing nationals on Sunday morning. Mike was just on it. I think Mike towed more cars out of the Hy-Vee parking lot than we towed off the racetrack during Saturday night's feature. Well, we definitely got to give Mike a big shout out. He had a successful weekend. Mike, we we salute you and your entire crew up there. By the way, your wife was very nice when she gave me my five dollars in change. Cool. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're done with that now. Uh, Rico crash yard. We mentioned crashes. Uh, Boy, there was two two ugly ones up there, man, on Saturday night. There was two uh, very very ugly crashes. We're glad to see Sheldon Hodenshield is okay. Oh, yeah. uh, took a very, very scary tumble, sheared the entire front end off of the car. And when I got the chance to walk over and take a look at that machine, Neil, uh, it, I mean, it was sheared off. The The down tubes on the car had been sheared off right behind where the radiator would sit. Yeah. There was no front bumper. There was no front axle, nothing. It was sheared off right there. Um so that was a very hard tumble. The big crash in the C main actually took out one of the Knoxville Raceway cameras. Oh, really? Yeah, that we had a camera up front. It was an old camera name. We called him Bernie. Really? It took out Bernie. Bernie ended up 200 feet down the track and in three pieces. Wow, he had a rough weekend. Bernie had a rough weekend. I, I, I think Bernie just went to that big camera store in the sky. I saw a little bit of the replays with the C main crash, and I'm going to tell you, between Rico and Rico uh, uh, hit flying through the air, he missed that inside wall yeah, barely, and then ended up hitting the secondary wall. Yeah, And uh, very, very fortunate that I think him taking flight probably was easier than uh, hitting the first, first tier wall where he would have been at. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something else. Uh, when we were running out there, uh, we actually had a lot of officials – uh, trying to keep the teams back because we were not sure if there was any fuel or fires anywhere because we had pyro all around the racetrack and Rico's car actually ended up close to the pyro. Wow. So, you know, that's, you know, just a little bit of news nuggets and information, but might be moving the pyro next time. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, but, uh, but, but on a more serious note, uh, there, uh, there was an incident that transpired not at Knoxville but up at New York State over the weekend. And on behalf of everyone here at R&R, we would like to extend our deepest condolences to the Ward family. What happened out there was a terrible tragedy, and our thoughts and prayers are with all of the parties involved during this difficult time. And, and really, Neil, that's, that's all that needs to be said on that. There's, you know... That's, that's just it. That's all that needs to be said. And with that, we'd like to congratulate all of the Team r r drivers on an awesome weekend. Uh, you know, it was great to see everybody yeah. and have such a good time up there. And uh, uh, now we just have to wait another, what, 364 days, 363 now we're days? No, we're a little bit further out because I think the Nationals next year are like August 12th through the 15th. All it's right. like back a week. So we got 365 days again. Yeah, ba- ba- basically we're, we're we're about you know 365, 366. Well, mark that on your calendars, folks. We, we're resetting the button. We got a year to wait again. Yeah, why don't you? Uh, we'll see if I get a year to find a new parking spot. Maybe somebody within the next year can figure out how to dethrone that 15 car. You know, I I, I thought. What do you What do you go back to the shop and have to think about that? I mean, it's it's like, what do, what do you do? It, I, I would attribute it to almost saying you have to find the kryptonite for Superman. I mean, he, he, so it being said, I mean, the only way it's going to happen is if Donnie has a experience as a technical or a, a mechanical failure. Here, here, here's another nugget I'll give you from kind of behind the scenes. We showed up to Knoxville. Shots is sporting this beard. Okay. Yeah. You know, when I saw, uh, when I saw him Tuesday night, uh, it was after the Queen's contest, and I kind of went out perusing a little bit, saying hi to everybody. I saw shots. He's sporting a beard. You know, stop, talk to him, and yada yada yada. He shows up for the driver's meeting on Saturday, clean-shaven. Really? He was messing with him. I, I mean, if you're going to take the victory lane photos, you might as well be properly groomed. <laughs> I think he messed with them all the way through the prelim night. I, I think that Donnie is uh, clutch when it comes time at Knoxville and, and on any given race weekend of the year, the night you don't want to face Donnie is on Saturday night at Knoxville. That's why we call him Donnie Knoxville, who races in? Shotsville. Boom, there you 
Can you do that one more time? I think Shotsville. You, there you go. There I think you go. moved from the mic the first time. But uh, like I said, we'd like to congratulate all Team R&R drivers on an awesome weekend. Diecast was on site at Knoxville. Yeah. Saw some people walking around with them, having fun with them. Uh, I know Reese, or not Reese, but uh, Reagan Saldana. Yep. He's already got one of the big cars and the little cars. Yep. Heaven help that car. Yeah, it's uh, going to probably be in for some repairs here shortly. <laughs> I hope you ordered spare parts. <laughs> um, but, no, Diecast was on the ground. We also had a new Kyle Larson, a new uh, Rico Abreu T-shirt. We're going to throw those up on the screen right now. Those are available now on r-rracewear.com. So we have those, uh, the Kyle Larson design, available in black T-shirts and hoodies, and then white and sport gray T-shirts. The Rico shirt is available in royal blue and charcoal. Yes, I did get that right. So uh, that was great. Awesome stuff. Did you guys have fun? You know, um, we had a great time talking we got to, to all the ladies, and we got to talk to a lot of the ladies in the trailer, uh, figuring out stuff and see what uh, maybe some new ideas you got there. Definitely some new ideas. Got to talk to the drivers. Got to hang out with my old buddy Terry McCarl for a little bit and talk. And, Mick uh, Stallion. Got some uh, great things coming. Uh, hang, hung out and talked to Shane Stewart for a while a little bit. Uh, Did you kick it with Shane? Kick it with Shane. There you go. But uh, it was neat to see everything and uh, take everything in up there. It it was great. And speaking of kick it, man, them guys uh, do a great job. And got to give a shout out to uh, uh, Kendra Jacobs on doing the kick it deal that she does every year. I mean, she works her butt off on that deal. And uh, – Really successful and fun for everybody. You know, it was it was awesome to see Kendra up there once again, raised over a hundred thousand uh, dollars for second year in a row, I believe. Yes. Um, our, our week started off. She helped me co-host the Queens contest, which I mean that was great because she understood all the hair and makeup stuff. Because my mind was just like warped. Like I, I, oh man, it was bad. So I think actually, if you get involved that next, next year, maybe you should try to run for that deal. No, no. Why not? Not thinking. Not just no. I think we should take a vote here at the office. Moving along, but uh, That's Kent, funny. Kent, shush it. Okay. Why don't Why don't you compete? I huh? win that thing. I, I. You know what? There it is, folks. Kyle takes on Neil. No. Next year. Yeah. Oh gosh. What What is this? This is a new addition to the is, Queen's is contest. Is this going to be the Knoxville Nationals Drag Queen contest? No. Let's get off that. I was thinking Kings contest. I was getting ready to say, dude, I'm talking about the Queens contest. You asking if I'll participate next year. You didn't mention anything about King, okay? Yeah. I mean, when there's I'm only in- one King around here. It's King Looters. Oh no! Boom! All right, we got to move on. This is going nowhere. <laughs> this is going nowhere in a hurry, folks. But, uh, but Neil, one of the questions I wanted to ask you before we kind of we get into squeal or no squeal in the preview of the coming week, um, coming out of Knoxville, there has been a debate since 2010 when the Nationals moved to a 50-lap format. We, there, there was the understanding that, you know, 50th Knoxville Nationals will run 50 laps. But we've kept that format since. It appears now, and you can take an informal poll, but almost you could say that you kind of cruise for the first 25 laps, and then the second 25 laps you get elbows up. Uh, case in point, Brian Brown. We're not going to say that he was sandbagging the first 25. Don't get us wrong. Uh, but he really started to wheel and pedal that thing the second 25 laps. So my question to you is, do we need to, number one, keep it at 50 laps, just keep things just the way that they are? Number two, go to a bigger fuel cell? Or number three, do we just need to cut it back to 25 to 30 laps and you're done? Well... Your mixed, opinion, sir. Mixed feelings a little bit about this. I know uh, it makes for a long night, especially 50 laps at the end of the night. I know we were there a little late the other night, but it is the Knoxville Nationals, so no complaint in there. Yeah, no, nobody's I'm, going to bed until 6 in the morning anyway. Well, especially guys named looters um, after they get their vehicle out of impound. Um, it takes a while. But back on the really. subject, I mean, I'm going to tell you, I'm a race fan, and I like the 50-lap deal. Um, okay, why do you like the 50-lapper? Two reasons. Um, being a race fan, of course, you get to see more racing, and you get to see the best drivers go at it for 50 laps. Yeah, it's 25 and 25 the way it's set up. Mm-hmm. Might be better if it's a full 50 straight on type deal where they don't have a fuel stop or a pit uh, stop in between. But that can be looked at two different ways. I mean, 
uh, you go out the first 25 laps and you're off and out to lunch and you can make some changes like some of these guys did and make a run there at the end, that, that makes it better for the fans too. Um, but, I mean, looking at the situation, if we were talking about Brian Brown winning instead of Donnie Schatz, I don't think we'd be t talking too much about this deal where it's 25-25 type of deal. I think everybody would be looking at it and going, this is a great race format. Um, I stay. I, th I think we need to stay with the 50-lap deal. Um, not so sure if I'm sold on the idea of having the pit stop there or running a bigger fuel cell. So I'm a little bit tossed up between that, but I like the 50-lap idea. Well, I mean, if you generally look at it, uh, the fuel cell that would be required to run a 50-lap event, and this is what I think uh, the, the proponents of this idea are not looking at, I think you would honestly have to double the size of the fuel cell. Probably would. Because as it stands right now, and Brian Brown mentioned this, between parade laps and a 25-lap feature, you're pretty much using up a fuel cell. A fuel cell. Yep. So if you were to try to run it all on one, you're doubling the fuel cell, which, by the way, that weight, it completely throws off your setup. What if you brought it down instead of going 50 laps, going to 40 laps? That's been discussed as well, too. I think you could get by doing less of a, a bigger fuel cell, which is much different than what these guys are using uh, throughout the year. Um, but it, but we've seen this. We've seen this in sprint cars coming where these guys keep shrinking these fuel tanks down, 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 and we're down to the smallest they can go as, they, as of right now. You know, there was a movement, I would say, a couple, two or three years ago um, to go between 28 gallons and up to 32, 33 to try to eliminate some of these fuel stops. Um, the teams were given the option. I think it was 2011. Yeah, yes, 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 it was. Well, let me Let me throw a curveball at you real quick. Okay, what about a sinker? Well, it could be a slider or any way you Just look at it. don't throw the screwball. Okay, well, the screwball is a little bit crazy sometimes. But, okay, <laughs> look at this. What, what, what if they left it up to the drivers? You can run a small fuel cell if you want. You can run a big fuel cell if you want. We're going to run 40 or 50 laps, and we're going to throw a caution flag. We're not going to throw a red flag. And you guys have got the big fuel cells on, and you stay out there, and guys with the small fuel cells at pit. I think the only way that you could get around that is if you told them they could not change tires. That's Yeah, you bring a point up. Because here's the thing. If I have an extra five gallons of fuel, that's no guarantee I'm going to get all the way to the end. But if you put someone behind me that's got a full load of fuel on, or here's the other thing to keep in mind, I pull it in there, I only maybe put six or seven gallons in that 28-gallon fuel cell, bolt the new right rear on it, baby. She's fast. Okay. Maybe you go 40 laps and you stay out there with the old tires and still be hanging in there. I don't think it, it, it could be a deal where it's a toss-up. It throws a couple variables in there. It, it really does, and people that uh, make a lot more money and have a lot more power than us get to deal with that. Don't make those decisions. Exactly, so we don't have to. So we have something to talk about next year. <laughs> there you go, buddy. <laughs> All right. Well, that's plenty on Knoxville, folks. Uh, the Outlaws start their trek towards the West Coast. Um, races in Nebraska, and then they go up to North Dakota, one of my favorite tracks, River City Speedway in Grand Forks, North Dakota. By the way, Neil, you need to get there before you retire. River Cities? Oh, yeah. Here, uh, another in I'm just full. Of, I'm chock full of all these stats because of the homework I had to do for the past week. It's been burning in your head. Dude, I went up there with eight spreadsheets in Excel full of stuff. Did they quiz you on that? I think they did. Okay. Anyway, Mark Dobmeyer up at River Cities. River Cities is a small, high bank track. Did you know he won a 410 feature with a 360 motor in there? No. Yep. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So Mark Dobmeyer, normally this is normally this is his weekend. Okay. He lives up in the Grand Forks area, so he runs River Cities on Friday nights. Okay. Oh. He drives to Knoxville, 10 hours away on Saturday. Wow. And then what did we determine? It was like five or six hours over to Houston's? Yeah. Five or six hours to Houston's on Sunday. Drives home, which is probably another four or five hours, to Grand Forks. Back to work on Monday morning. Road trip. Road trip. And God forbid if he has a bad weekend. Oh, it's a long week, folks. Trust us, trust us. But no, uh, the World of Outlaws STP Sprint Car Series heads up to River City Speedway in Grand Forks, North Dakota, before going to the birthplace of Donnie Schatz. That would be Nodak Speedway up in Minot, North Dakota. Very cool there. 
Uh, Power Eye, the Midgets, have a triple header with stops at Lincoln Speedway, Macon Speedway, and Angel Park Speedway coming up this weekend. Three nights of midget racing action in the Midwest. You can't beat that. And the late models, the next big event on the dirt track racing schedule, it is the Chase for the Globe. The World 100. Bing! Nah, that's a big one. Now, I, I, heard, uh, I heard Club R&R might be rolling there. Yeah, old Club R&R has uh, cha- changed a few things for us. That's, uh, it's been fun. It's nice to have a uh, place to hang out and uh, enjoy the races. Now, let's preface this by saying this. Club R&R is the nickname that we have given to the travel trailer that we are now lucky enough to take to the races. You know, I, I, I still think it needs more neon lights inside. Oh, it's new. It'll happen. Palm trees, pink flamingos. We'll make this happen. I'm sure there'll be other things in that trailer we can't discuss on air. Um, it's censored. Well, <laughs> local tracks have quite a bit going on. So, you know, Neil, we've kind of gotten over the big Knoxville hump here. Uh, what's things like at R&R right now, and, and what are we shifting gears towards as we head into the fall months? What is actually, I mean, and kind of starting a little bit right here before Knoxville, uh, believe it or not, this this thing called 2015 is coming, and we're already working on. No. Stuff. Yes. I thought it was a toss between that and 2016. No, it's. Uh, I, I think the boss would be impressed to hear that we are actually working on. Yes, I said 2015 stuff. That means we're actually doing it a week before. That's more than a week before this is due. <laughs> I was getting ready to say, Neil, you're you're starting to scare me. Yeah, I think I scare everybody when we start to do stuff this advance. When you but. talk about organizing and planning ahead. Uh, here we go. I start worrying. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's leave it alone. I, I, no, I, it's. Uh, I give him enough grief about that. It's pretty. It's pretty relaxed and uh, pretty good right now. This is uh, allowing us to to do some new things and look at stuff for uh, next year, and to finish out the year, um, going down the home stretch, especially for the outlaw and sprint car drivers, especially with late mile drivers. We still got the World One Hundred big event. Uh, we're doing some stuff for, but. Uh, Pretty pumped and uh, really excited about what's coming and uh, get some of those new die-cast cars going, going for us, too, those new programs. Yeah, we definitely want to see that. I know the everybody that I talk to, they want to they want to see more die-cast, and honestly, we want to see more die-cast. It's fun, and hey, I tell you, doing videos about shirts is great, but when you get to do a video about die-cast, it's that much cooler. You know, it'd be kind of cool to, to actually hear from some of our folks that are listening to our podcast to, to, to see what uh, drivers they would like to see done in uh, diecast in the future. Be uh, something we would like to put up there and let them uh, maybe put in some input on that. Absolutely. So if you just heard that right there, folks, if you got an idea for a driver in a paint scheme for diecast cars, put it in the comments section here on this post or on YouTube. Old, new, whatever. Old, new, whatever. I mean, and if I could get a ground swelling of support... We will do a Kyle Luter Street Stock Legend diecast, limited number, but I think we can we can we can get some support going for that. So we'll just let the viewership, uh, our listening ship, basically tell us uh, that they don't want a Kyle Luter Street Stock diecast. Dude, the Street Stock Legend diecast would be legendary. Thank, moving, thank good folks. We do not have a tool. This will not happen. Moving right along, it is now time. For my favorite segment of the show each and every week, folks, it is now time for Squeal or No Squeal each and every week. Squeal and Neil Quick and I get three racing-related questions, and we have to give our opinions in the form of a yes or a no. But instead of saying yes or no, we say squeal if we agree and no squeal if we don't. Still can't call on a lifeline on these? No, I don't think you can pull the audience or eliminate two of the answers. What are you saying? I don't have two people that will help me on this? I don't think you have two answers in your head. That's true. Let's go. (laughs) It'd be four, actually. You would get rid of two. Sorry. All right, moving right along. Question number one, Neil. Yes. Squeal. Well, you got to read it. Oh, I was supposed to read it? I thought you were reading number one. No, no, no. You always read question number one. Oh, okay. Well, since last three weeks. All right, folks. uh, Question number one. Will Donnie Schatz eclipse Steve Kinzer's 12 Knoxville National wins? squeal absolutely i uh there's no doubt i mean uh i don't know where he's gonna stop actually i i will donnie put 15 16 up i i don't know i uh look for donnie uh definitely to put up more than 12 though i'm gonna go no squeal oh god i knew this was coming here's what i'm gonna say he's gonna stop at 10 or 11 right no i okay he's he's gonna stop winning hold on hold on i say he gets to 10 
but somewhere within the next three years, I'm going to call this right now, and you can either call me a hero or a zero in three years from now. I'm going zero right now. Hush it. Squeal. No squeal. Here's what I'm going to say. Within the next two to three years, Brian Brown will have it figured out. He will get the combination to the safe. And I think once Brian Brown gets over the hump of winning that first one, he's going to go on a tear like we've seen shots do. He's going to win like four or five of them in a row. And at that point, will Donnie Shots, in my mind, still have the drive and the desire to beat the 12 Knoxville Nationals? Because, oh, by the way, Mr. Shots is making another trip to Knoxville this year. For the it's, late model Nationals. It's not in a sprint car. I mean, but we are counting sprint car Knoxville National. Wins. That's what I'm saying. So what I'm here's what I'm trying to say, though. Let's say Brian Brown, in the next two or three years, gets one and then rattles off four or five in a row. Donnie hasn't made it to 12. He's been running the late model more. Does he come back? I, I'm not disagreeing that Brian Brown has the potential to win a Knoxville Nationals, especially after the last three years' performances. I'm going to tell you it's coming and it's going to happen, but we're four, four wins away from Donnie tying Steve, five away from breaking it. Donnie shots That's is going to be five running. years. Okay. We've got eight wins in how many years? Nine. Okay. I don't think this man's done. Okay. Well, we disagree, but yeah. Right. Normal. Question number two still involves Donnie Schatz. This is like the Donnie Schatz show today. Oh, he deserves it, man. He put up number eight this week. <laughs> very, very, very much so. And we like to give a special shout out to Diane, his mom, running a t shirt trailer. She does a great job. Diane so, does great with the trailer. Yeah, we like Diane. All right. Question number two with Squeal or No Squeal can Darren Pittman catch Donnie Schatz for the title? Squeal or No Squeal? Ooh, this is a hard one. Mm-hmm. This is that one I need a lifeline for. You need a lifeline for? Are you like, uh, so wait a minute. There was, there was 50-50, phone a friend, and ask the audience. Can I go 50-50 on this one? Yeah. Why don't you go 50-50 on this one? I'm torn between either way. I mean, Donnie and Darren both have had a great year. And uh, how many points uh, basically is he in lead right now? Well... Darren has lost some points, two shots. Yes. Right now, as we take a look at the point standings, Darren Pittman's 118 back, Paul McMahon's 174 back, Kerry Madsen 313, Joey Saldana 348, and Brad Sweet's 504 back. I'm going to go no squeal. You're going to go no squeal on this? You don't think he can catch him? No. Well, I'm going to go squeal with you. Oh, I knew you would. I mean, here's, here's the deal. The, the stretch of this season is going to decide the championship is going to be that big West Coast Speed Week when they just start racing on Friday, August 29th up at Skagit. And they keep humming along right on through Antioch on Sunday, September the 7th. That They race pretty much every night, save for one night off on a Thursday night. They pretty much race every night. Right. Darren Pittman looked better earlier this year when the Outlaws were out west. Well, I, I, I agree with you. Darren did have a better run earlier in the year, but Mr. Shotsville is bringing number eight with him in his back pocket and a little bit of confidence going into the swing. Well, we- and, and he's going up north, back home, my not. Okay, yep, yep. So you're going to carry that momentum into those home tracks and then go on the west coast swing? Donnie Schatz wins. Okay, all right, all right. What if Darren Pittman has more wins than Donnie Schatz at the end of the year? Are you going to squeal like you did last year about the title? If he's got more wins? If Darren Pittman has more wins than Donnie Schatz this year and finishes second, are you still going to squeal? What's the win category right now? Are you? St- no, no, no. I'm asking your question. You, you, That's the question you have to answer. It's going to be tough. I mean, uh, I think wins are definitely a situation where there should be more points, and definitely the guy that wins a championship should have more wins, but uh, we've seen that in different series. Uh, oh, so this year it's okay. No, 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 no. Last year we had a problem between the poles and the wins. It was very, very far off. Qualifying points. Yes, qualifying points. Not just poles. Yeah, qualifying. sorry, qualifying points. Donnie Schatz has 13 wins and six quick times. Darren Pittman has 11 wins and two quick times. And Donnie Schatz is in the points lead. So, oh, well, I'm not even going to argue with this at this point. Well, final question in squeal or no squeal is up to you, my friend. Yes. Read that one up. All right. Let's see. Number three was Club R and R the way to travel this weekend. Definitely squeal. Absolutely squeal on that. Rockstar lifestyle, buddy. Woo! Yeah. Cold ones at Club R and R. That was pretty relaxing. 
you guys got to enjoy that a whole lot more than I did. Yeah, you were having cold ones in turn three. Well, not on turn three, but behind it. Yeah, behind, well, over there by the livestock pavilions and the trailers. And you're, the you're, you're exactly right. But, but in all seriousness, I mean, if you get the chance to go to the races, you got to take a camper. Yeah, Club R and R is uh, absolutely the the way to go, and uh, we're uh, definitely welcoming to go to more events. Uh, I think our next trip out is probably going to be the World One Hundred that's coming up in a couple of weeks. But uh, definitely, fans uh, look us up, come out and hang out, and uh, talk some racing. And uh, <laughs> Kyle Luters will uh, introduce you to Club R and R out there. And no, 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 you are the VIP hostess out there, and I'm I'm afraid I'm going to miss the World One Hundred trip because I got to go to Canada. But guess what's happening in Canada? What's happening in Canada? I'm getting on my snowmobile. Snowmobiles, no. <laughs> All right, folks, we want to thank we gotta you. got to end it there. We want to thank you guys for tuning in to Gas hey, and Glory. Hey, hold on, hold on. There was a bet on the snowmobiles. You're, you're... It's still on. It's still on. It's still on. 100 bucks. I go over 100 miles an hour. No way. It's going to happen. We want to thank you guys for tuning in to Gas and Glory. And remember, you can pick up some amazing gear over at www.r-racewear.com, the web's largest store for dirt track racing merchandise and apparel. On behalf of everyone here at R&R Enterprises, he's Squealing Neil Quick, and I'm Kyle Luters. We'll see you next week. You've been listening to Gas and Glory, presented by R&R Enterprises. All rights reserved. Please visit the web's largest sprint car store today at www.r-rracewear.com. The views and opinions expressed in the show are the host and guest alone and do not directly reflect those of R&R Enterprises.